We continue to track the potential for strong storms and heavy rain. I've got the latest on a flash flood watch just ahead. Donations are still pouring in to flood victims here in Johnson County. Two people are injured, one of them stabbed while trying to break up a suspected drug deal in Lexington. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good afternoon to you on this Monday after a steamy, hot weekend. We are tracking the threat for more showers and thunderstorms. And those storms could bring damaging winds and flooding rain. That is why this is a WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day. Let's check in first with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Chris? Yeah, coming off that weekend that featured even more flash flooding into parts of central and eastern Kentucky, we are dealing with the potential all over again. Defender continuing to track showers and storms into south, uh, southern and southeastern Kentucky. These are fairly slow movers and putting down a ton of lightning and a ton of heavy rain. Sounds familiar, right? Basically similar to the storms we've had over the past couple of weeks. We'll have to keep an eye out for some local wind damage with a few of these cells as well, especially here in the Leslie County over toward Hyden or the uh, Hyden to Hazard Corridor into Perry County. Storm to the south of Jackson and Breathitt County has weakened a little bit. A lot of thunder and lightning coming from the storm in the northern part to Jackson County. A lone shower near Richmond. Other showers and storms are trying to pop out to the southwest of the Madison County area. Rest of the region in pretty good shape as of now, but there's a little piece of energy that is coming out of Illinois working its way toward the east. We've had some heating out ahead of that, so let's watch for some thunderstorms to develop out ahead of that as we go into later this evening into tonight, and then it's game on for additional rounds of showers and storms right on into the day on Tuesday when we get a cold front in here. Flash flood watch is out for all the counties that are shaded in green. That is much of central and eastern Kentucky. So rounds of thunderstorms around the flash flood threat is going to continue through tomorrow. But guys, as we go toward the middle and end of the week, temperatures take a little turn toward the pleasant side. We'll let you know if that can come with completely dry weather or not. When I get back in a few minutes. Chris, thank you. The federal government continues to survey the flooding devastation in Johnson County. Workers with FEMA arrived in Johnson County over the weekend to assess the damage. A week ago today, flash flooding led to the deaths of four people and damaged hundreds of homes. Our Mike Linden is in Johnson County where donations for victims continue to pour in. It's our top story at 4 30. It's been almost one week since the devastating flash flooding near the Flat Gap community here in Johnson County. And today, there's more than 200 people volunteering their time, handing out donations to those that need them the most. One week after flash flooding destroyed more than 150 homes and killed four people, the Johnson County community is still showing their support. Donations of food, water, and cleaning supplies continue to come in by the truckload at Johnson Central High School. School officials say volunteers look to the flood victims as if they were family. It's been unreal. And uh, again, uh, that explains the family atmosphere here in, in Johnson County in Eastern Kentucky. I mean, family comes first. And, and, and this is a prime example of that right here. With the start of school in less than two weeks, the donation drop off center will soon be moved to a more permanent location by the middle of the work week. Until then, anyone with any questions in regards to donations is encouraged to call 606 789 2500. In Johnson County, Mike Linden, WKYT. And Mike tells us that folks there still need things like rubber gloves, boots, and bottled water. As cleanup continues in Johnson County, questions about if people can rebuild in the flooded out areas are emerging. The judge executive says generations have called the area home, but he's not sure if they will rebuild or leave now. The area that flooded last week along Mudlick Creek is in a 100 year floodplain. The state EPA says it will recommend that no one rebuild in the area. They've lived there for generations in some cases. Their mom and dad lived there, and, and, and that's where they live. And you, you take a gamble anytime, I guess, you're that close to, to a stream. It can happen, but uh, uh, historically it hadn't. Sam is at the live desk now with our investigative reporter, Miranda Combs, with more on what she's working on for this story tonight at 6. Sam? Amber, thank you. This was an extremely rare event. When you hear that it was a once in a 500 year 
a vet. I mean, that's many, many lifetimes of people. Right, and that's according to the Kentucky Department for Envi Environmental Protection. So that gives you an idea of just how unbelievably rare this event is. And they say, you know, we don't suggest that you rebuild in that area, but we even understand that this was unlikely to happen. So the county judge executive there says that this whole thing is going to work out the way they do things there. And I you guess. know, Sam, it's so different yeah. in the rural areas than it is, say, in Lexington, where if you were going to try to build something on a floodplain, you'd have to go through multiple steps, get permits with the county and with the state. And basically, the judge executive is saying, you know, we don't have planning and zoning here. We, mm -hmm. This is generation after generation, as he said in the soundbite, have been living on this property. So who knows what will happen? So will they be allowed to rebuild the people that lost their homes? Honestly, Sam, I think a lot of it is going to hinge on FEMA this week and what they say, and that will help them move forward. But as we were talking earlier before this started, the segment started, you saw it. If mm -hmm. you were just up a little bit, even on the same side of the road as mm -hmm. that creek, you were fine. So the judge did mention, you know, maybe that is the solution, that everybody move up a little bit. So we'll just have to, to wait and see. It's awfully early. But no question, the people that were hit by this thing, I mean, it was just devastating, the force of nature that ripped through there. I mean, it, you saw it, I saw it. Incredible. Mm -hmm. All right, Miranda, thank you. Look forward to 6 o'clock. Amber, back to you. Sam, thank you. A man charged in a crash that killed a child has bonded out of jail and is now under house arrest. Officers say William Mefford ran a red light in Woodford County, hitting a driver and three other family members last Sunday morning. 11 year old Ryan Moore later died at UK Hospital. Today in court, Mefford had new charges of possession of marijuana and possession of drug paraphernalia added. We'll have more from today's preliminary hearing. That's ahead on WKYT News at 5 30. Two people are recovering this afternoon after a staff. Stabbing in Lexington, police say a man and woman tried to break up a fight between two suspected drug dealers on Ray Street around 8 this morning. The suspects stabbed the man in the chest and hit the woman in the head. Both victims have non life threatening injuries. A former NFL player is giving back to help patients at Kentucky Children's Hospital. Chad Pennington and his wife made a donation today that will help children get around the hospital. Rebecca Smith has the story. You like to take the curves real fast or real slow? Which one? Brady's buggies are colorful wagons designed to make moving around the hospital easier for children attached to IV poles. In some cases, the portable IVs are needed for chemo. In others, they're nutritional lifelines that give the patients fluids they need. Former Dolphins player Chad Pennington and his wife Robin were surprised to find out Brady's buggies hadn't been to Kentucky until now. We've had our own family and friend experiences in the hospital. We know how important it is for the children to be able to get out and, and move around a little bit and be able to use these brakes. Brady buggies will, will be a lot of fun for them. The buggies were purchased through Chad and Robin's First in 10 Foundation and the Lexington School. And you push that button and it races. In Lexington, Rebecca Smith, WKYT. That is so cool. Chad and Robin Pennington created the First and 10 Foundation in 2003. They focus on southern West Virginia and the tri state areas as well as East Tennessee. Now, many of us have wondered what is the secret to a long life? Well, according to this lady, it's God and basketball. Ernestine Garst of McLean County celebrated her 109th birthday last week. She said two things to still keep her going the higher power and her beloved University of Kentucky basketball team. Mrs. Garst says that sometimes she can't believe she's been around for that long. It's amazing to me that I'm 109 years old. And that I still enjoy things. When I was 80 years old, I thought, oh, I feel pretty good, but something will happen. But see, I just still have birthdays. I just have those birthdays just roll around. She's had 29 birthdays since she thought that. Mrs. Garst also says that one of the last things on her bucket list is to meet Kentucky coach John Calipari. She's also hoping to live long enough to see the Cats win the championship one more time. Yep. Little look across the state right now. We've got temperatures that are on the warm side. Scattered thunderstorms are on the way. We'll talk about them next.